I see a lot of athletes making a decision in the winter to trade their athleticism for strength in the weights room. But to me, the clue's in the title. I mean, it's called athletics, not strength ethics. Don't be fooled. Strength in sport is only any use if you retain the same level of athleticism with that newfound strength. If you're heaving more pounds off the floor, but you're sacrificing that fluid movement, come competition time, you're going to be a sad sack. <laughs> On the other hand, if you increase your athleticism over a training season, you will reap a faster time when it counts. Victory! So what is athleticism? Well, an easy definition is the ability to control and coordinate your body at greater speeds and over greater ranges of movement. So why can weights then have such a detrimental effect on athletes? I mean, I see people lifting like Dr. Squat gave me the equation that if they doubled their PB, they might halve their hundred time. Well, of course. I mean, if I add 50 kilos extra to my hip thrust, I'm going to expect first place in the race. Consider this, though. If you increase your strength, but you lose your range of movement in that exercise, it's not going to translate into times. Well, I mean, it'll translate into times, but probably in the opposite direction that you want it to. What kind of weights witchcraft are you talking? If you reduce your range of movement just so you can lift heavier, your internal rotation will go into hiding faster than Jerry being chased by Thomas. Internal rotation? Gone. Damn internal rotation. You see, you can't run fast if you lose internal rotation of the hip joint. So, if you lose internal rotation of the hip, you lose athleticism. And if you lose athleticism, then you lose performance in athletics. Now, weirdly, your performance can actually rise in strengthetics, or as is more commonly known, power lifting, while actually reducing internal rotation. You see, squats and deadlifts require external rotation of the hip, and the limited squat depth requirement means that you actually can reduce internal rotation of the hip over training. When you go below parallel and deep squat, you're actually reconfirming with every single rep the need for internal rotation of the hip, because the hip, ball and socket has to internally rotate to get you that depth. So even though you're externally rotating the femur head, which is the ball, the depth causes an internal rotation on the acetabulum, which is a socket. And that is joint alchemy. Ah, so it's like digging deep for gold. No? If you go around cutting the range of movement just so you can hoist more weight, so you can get yourself a bro butt slap from the squat rack boys, you're sacrificing development of internal rotation. And that solicited slap ass of approval is going to cost you. It's just a matter of time. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to end up turning tricks by the Techno Gym leg press, but if you think the Strength Fair is just going to wave their magic wand and convert your gains to speed, you're dreaming, Tinkerbell. You've gotten stronger, but you've lost your athleticism. And probably your innocence. So, when looking at exercises that you do in the weights room, Ask yourself, how do I program increases in range of movement in the exercises at certain times? Instead of just thinking, mass, mass, mass kilo, don't sacrifice range of movement for intensity because in that act, you're robbing your future self of real riches just so you can make a quick buck today. Like the Bernie made off of muscle. Look, I'm a strength junkie. I like squatting high. So, what does this infernal rotation mean? Internal rotation means turning the joint medially. It basically means 
turning towards the midline of the body. So, see the middle of you? That's your midline. It means turning the joint towards that. If you twist the joint towards the middle of your body, that is internal rotation. If you twist the joint towards the outside of your body, that is external rotation. Pretty much all joints can rotate, but only some are supposed to. See a finger? You can twist it, but it doesn't take much to break it. The ball and socket joints are purpose-built to twist, though. And you've got two of them in your body. Your shoulders and your hips. Now, coming off the old ball and socket joints are the hinge joints, like the elbows and the knees. Now, they can rotate a little, but they're not meant to very much. So when you move to create internal rotation of the hip, the internal rotation comes from the hip. You're closing the distance between the upper thigh and the midline of your body. You're not dropping your knee towards the midline of the body. Ah, so when hips rotate, the knee stays straight. Wick, wicky, anatomy wrap. This is called keeping your knee in neutral. And what's neutral? Well, think of the hip as a start and the foot as the end. You want a straight line between the two. If that line starts deviating in towards the middle, you best start looking up knee braces on Amazon Prime, because you're going to need that next day delivery. Mental doggy bag time. You need internal rotation of the hip to sprint well. So don't cut range and don't get that internal rotation from the knee. OK, full range, check. Watch the knee, check. Is there anything else? But most important, don't let your present self spurred on by that need to fill that hole deep in your soul, steal from the future you. You may temporarily feel more adequate as you scribble down that bigger number post-lift, but you're just feeding your habit. Instead, fill that emptiness inside by going deep with perfect form physically to help heal you spiritually. That's heavy. No, that's deep. Yeah, and heavy. No, I'm, no, I'm saying go deep. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't know what you're saying. You say go deep. You can go heavy. Deep. Yeah, literally and metaphorically deep. Literally heavy. I hope this helps. If it did, bust me a thumbs up. Let me tell you something. Boston makes me feel good. Externalize your inner dialogue in the comments section. Hit the notification bell. If you like my vibe, then please subscribe. Woo! Woo!